Hello, everyone. Welcome to Beyond the Basics. I'm going to start with a passage from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bare and sprout and furnishing seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the very matter for which I sent it. This is from the book of Isaiah, like I said, chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. Now, obviously, it's talking about the word of God. But what is this program, Beyond the Basics, going to be about? What are we going to be looking at? Well, I will say that we're going to be looking at anything that's not just the word of God, but things that contribute, contribute to the harmony of the text of the word of God. We're going to be looking at the basic instructions before leaving earth, which is the, the acronym that some say is, is used for the Bible. But we're also going to be looking at things that are, that are not in the original canon of Scripture and how those things are, uh, how, how they are used to either uh, bring credence to the Bible or uh, they are used uh, to, to, to hold up and uplift the Bible. We're going to be asking questions how do we get the Bible? Where does it come from? What were the processes that led us to the 66 books that are, created, that are put in our canon that we venerate as God's word today? And today I want to talk about that very specific phrase, God's word. What is God's word? Well, there's a lot of folks in the church that I think unfortunately believe that God's word is just the 66 books. Now, if you're listening, you might be thinking, oh boy, he's going somewhere where I don't want him to go. Hang with me and let me explain. I want to uh, uh, loosely quote a scripture. It says, he who considers and judges a matter before he hears it, hears it, it is both a shame and a folly unto him. So I encourage you to listen and to consider everything that I'm saying on this program because it will probably be a stretch to some of you. But consider it first before you judge it so that you are not considered according to the word of God, as it says in Proverbs, God saying it's a shame and a folly unto you. So we know that it says in the book of John, chapter 21, verse 25, that John the, the, the apostle says that, that there are so many other things that Jesus did and said, which if they were written in detail, that he supposes that not even the world itself would contain the books which were written. Now, of course, Jesus is God. No evangelical fundamental Christian would ever say he's not. So we must then, through deductive reasoning, conclude that every single word that ever came out of his mouth was God's word. Unless, of course, he was saying something that he was quoting someone else or saying something and showing how it's not true. Or, Peter, you said this, but I tell you this. So everything that comes from the heart of Jesus, it, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So the disciples, they took the things that Jesus said, which were important for the basic instructions of their gospel to point people towards salvation. But Jesus says so many other things. Now, also, we would say, too, that if, if the Bible is everything that God would ever say and ever will say, even in heaven, when he's just sitting around and enjoying a conversation with us while we're watching nature or thinking about the past or the future. I believe we'll have those things, just those relaxed moments with Jesus. Those are also God's word. He cares about these things. He cares about little things, not just big things. If that's the case, if the Bible is just these 66 books, that means there's more information in my brain than there is in the Bible. There's more information in a blue wave computer than there is in the Bible. And I don't believe that to be the case because God is infinite. And he's not just infinite in time, infinite in every way, infinite in every possible thought, which means there's no way you'll ever know everything that God, God will ever say or do or think because he's infinitely thinking way ahead of you all the time. So you're always going to have questions. And I believe he'll always have answers, but you'll never know everything that's going on deep within the mind and verbs, and nouns, and adjectives of God. 
So let's talk about that. So now that we're past that and we can realize that we do have the Word of God, which we believe is the Bible, and I believe it's the absolute Word of God. I believe that it's inerrant. I believe that it's totally inspired. Uh, The Holy Spirit speaking through authors throughout 1,600 years of time to give us this Word. I don't believe that it contradicts itself. If there seems to be a contradiction, we're looking at it incorrectly. I agree with all those things. I'm evangelical. I believe in the fundamentals of the Bible. However... There's more than just the Logos word or the written word. There's more than just the Rima word or the inspired word or the supernatural word, the spirit-filled word. It says in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, that in the beginning, the earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord was fluttering, hovering over the surface of the waters. Then it says, and God said, let there be light. And then there was light. We know that there's principles in Scripture that talk about when God speaks, things are done. Every time he speaks, he creates. I believe a lot of times we do this as Christians, don't we? We want God to speak. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. And it seems that maybe at times he doesn't speak as quick as we want him to. I think God's careful with his words because he knows that whenever he speaks, he creates. So we should be asking him, rather just speak all the time. Maybe it should be God speak what we want you to speak what you want to speak in us to bring about the best possible uh, end for us or purpose for us. Another discussion. So what are all the words of God? Well, we know that he speaks things into existence. We know that it says in the book of John chapter 1 that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And then John 1.14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Nothing that ever came into being ever existed without being made by this specifically second person of the Trinity, the Yatsar, the forming out of the dust, Jesus Christ, the pre-incarnate Christ, I believe, in Genesis chapter 2. Because it says, no one has ever seen God the Father, but the only begotten God in the bosom of the Father, he is the one who explains him. That's through all time, through all space. We see this, and there'll be many more discussions about this on this program. So what am I getting to here? Well, let me ask this question. Do you exist? Well, if you exist, that means God spoke you into existence. And if he spoke you into existence, that means that you are, in fact, a word of God. You're not the word of God. You're not the Bible. But you're a word of God. A secondary word, but still a word. You're important to him. He would not have spoken you into existence if he didn't think you were important. You were designed. You were created. You were formed, knitted together in your mother's womb. He had purposes and plans for you, not for your destruction, but to give you a hope and a future and to use you for his purposes. Well, if that's the case, now we look at Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, not differently, but with a new perspective. So shall my word be which goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty without accomplishing everything that I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. If you are a word of God spoken into existence by God and if you submit to God and allow his purposes and plans in your life, Take your hands off the steering wheel and trust him and listen to his voice in obedience. Then you will not be able to help but doing what God created you to do. His word in this world in which we live. Folks, there's so much more than just our basic instructions. These are these 66 books is the Bible, but we're going to be looking at many other things outside of it. That's not heretical. It's only heretical when we say that other things belong in the Bible, which we won't be doing. But there's many other things. What is God saying throughout all of time, throughout the history of the world, throughout a lot of these pseudopigraphical writings, the pseudopigraphy, books that are from ancient times, but they're not fully trusted and we can't put them in our canon. That's what Beyond the Basics is about. So thank you for joining We're going to be first looking into the book of Enoch and wondering what is this book? Where does this come from and why is it important? Why is it quoted in the book of Jude? Why does Jesus loosely make references to it? And why is it still included in the canon of the Coptic church? I'm going to be looking at some of these things today.
and why it's important. Thank you for joining Beyond the Basics, and we look, I look forward to seeing you next time.